Hi guys, so welcome to what is in my opinion the battle of the best tablets of this year. The Apple iPad Air 2 and the Galaxy Tab S2 9.7. They are very similar to each other, but there are also definitely a few differences here. And I think if you want a great tablet of 10 inch, this one or the other is the one to go for. So let's start with the design and build quality. Size comparison first, as you can see, the Tab S is a little bit more narrow, it's not a whole lot, and it's also a little bit shorter, but this does make a difference. What makes a difference though is the weight, because we are at 389 grams here on the Tab S and about 430 on the Apple iPad Air 2. So both are very lightweight, but this definitely feels noticeably lighter, also thinner, as you can see here. So. Both are definitely nice. In terms of build quality, it's a bit hard to decide who is the winner. The more premium feel goes to the Apple because we just use aluminum, which doesn't bend or do anything. It's really solid. Button placement is nice because you have the volume rocker here and the power button here, so you can't accidentally hit one or the other. In terms of ports, also fine here at the bottom and the speakers. For the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 though, I am a little bit disappointed because we have it too close here to each other and I did often mistakenly hit one or the other so I would wish for something like that here as well. In terms of the material here, it is maybe just plastic but therefore soft touch coated and still feels very solid and premium. So it doesn't feel maybe as premium as this but it doesn't feel any less substantial or solid so great job here as well. Ports are quite similar as you can see we have also stereo bottom facing speakers here the micro USB and the headphone jack. So in terms of size, no big difference. In terms of weight, yes, maybe, but it either way it doesn't make up for enough. It's really a matter of what you want. I'm not the biggest fan of those buttons because in landscape mode, I did accidentally hit the back button quite often. This is a little bit better made here on the iPad Air 2. So, I think you have to choose the winner here for yourself. I would give a small little win in terms of overall design because it's just so much lighter to the Tab S, but this one gets the more premium and substantial feel. As for the display, and now I will have to use something because I otherwise have too much glare here. I will have to use this stand. So let's turn them both on. We have fingerprint readers and both work quite reliably. So no problems here as, at all. So let's go into this and see what we've got in terms of display. Both are at 100% of brightness and maybe it's already visible, but the Tab S is a lot brighter. As you can, let me quickly try to find the same. Here it is. It is a lot more vibrant and vivid. The colors are more natural and accurate on the Apple iPad Air 2, but they are definitely more vibrant and more popping on the Tab S2. It definitely d depends on what you want. In terms of viewing angles, the definitely better device is the S, because maybe I don't think it's that much visible on video, but maybe here you can see it already a little bit while the Tab S is still very sharp and solid in terms of viewing angles, the Apple iPad Air 2 dims already quite a bit. It's still totally fine, but there is a definite difference. The whites are the biggest difference here because as you can see, they seem a little bit more dull and more muted here on the iPad Air 2, but the white point is better because the white point on the S2 is a little bit more on the warmer side, but as you can already see here once again, it is way brighter. In terms of the blacks, as you can see here are new borders. It is okay on the iPad Air 2, but it's slightly bluish hue, so it could be definitely deeper and the black on the Tab S2 can't be improved. So if you want a more accurate, more natural, maybe for a long-term period to use display, the iPad Air 2 is the nicer one, but definitely the more expensive impressive and satisfying one is for sure the one on the Tab S2. Let's quickly check the sound here what we have. I will just start a video if I could find the app. Okay, here it is. Let's start and see what we've got. Both have the disadvantage now firing right into this stand, but this shouldn't make enough of a difference because they both have the same Hi disadvantage. Guys, so welcome to my review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 9.7. What I usually do at this point is introduce the device so you know what this video will be about. But the only thing that I have to say right now is this device is an absolute killer. Not quite perfect, but still. If you want to know more about it, I would say watch the full review. 
So let's try the same thing here with, and as you can see, just real quick, the colors are completely different. This one looks definitely oversaturated and definitely unnatural. And especially for my videos, it's even worse, but on other videos, you don't notice it that much. What I usually do at this point is introduce the device so you know what this video will be about. But the only thing that I have to say right now is this device is an absolute killer. Mm. Not quite perfect, but still. If you want to know more about it, I would say watch the full review right now. So let's start off with this. So what are my thoughts on the sound? The overall sound experience for me was just nice on the iPad. It just found it a little bit more rich, a little bit more full. The Tab S. Here, this wasn't that much noticeable because in music and so on, it's more noticeable. It sounds a little bit more echo, it sounds a little bit more shallow, and on the highest volume, it starts to distort a little bit. It's not a huge difference, and if you try them side by side, it's actually not that bad, but for some reason, I just prefer the sound experience on the iPad Air 2. What they both have in common, if you play games, you block at least one speaker, sound will be muffled and you will hear a, less, a lot less. So that's one thing where I am a little bit disappointed. So let's get into the performance now and I will make it quite quick because it's quite hard to compare them directly. Here is a Twitter app. It's not the same, but it doesn't really make a point because as you can see here, super buttery smooth on the S2. Nothing to complain, also very responsive. And the same goes here for the Twitter app as well. It has slower scrolling, slightly more tendency towards appearing smooth, but they do both do a great job. This is the smoother if you want to a really nice smooth, but this is smoothened up, so it seems way smoother than it is, but the frame rate seems higher on the Tab S. If we go into the browser, you also already noticed the quite a dull display of the iPad Air 2 once again but it's not that obvious in, in reality if you look straight onto it but the viewing angles once again are way better here but as you can see the performance very lightweight very smooth and very fast scrolling you can make really long flicks this is definitely different here on the iPad Air 2 very smooth as well the frame rate once again seems a little bit less but quite smooth it's quite fast the overall experience for browsing is definitely better in my opinion on the Tab S2, but both deliver a more than satisfying one, so I don't have any complaints. And for the gaming experience, I won't show it off because you can just check my each separate reviews because what I usually tend to do is if I do a comparison, I almost make a double review. And so if you want to know something a little bit more about the performance in games, let's make it quick. The iPad R2 is definitely the one to go for if you want to play a lot of games because games look a lot better in terms of graphics, way more detailed and smoother. They are totally fine in terms of performance on the Tab S2 as well, but the graphics qualities get diminished in games like Riptide, Asphalt and Auto Real Racing. The resolution seems like just half of it. This is something that you, that you won't have. So overall performance, I would give this the winner for apps and the system. But if you want to play games, definitely go for this one. Okay, now let's get to the battery. They both charge quite long. This one takes about 3 hours and 40 minutes and this one takes about 4 hours. So quite similarly, both very long, but it's quite the average on a device like this. In terms of battery life though, it's a little bit hard to compare them because the Samsung is very efficient in video playback. And I would give it the definite winner if we only check the performance for video playback because it's a really efficient one and it doesn't drain almost any battery if you watch videos. During use in apps and so on, the iPad seems a little bit better and also in standby drain. It is quite good on the Samsung with about like every eight hours, like 1% or so. That's just a rough estimate, but there's pretty much no standby drain on the Apple iPad Air 2. So if you want to have a device that you don't use that much, but want to have it available at all times, the iPad Air 2 is the run because it doesn't lose any charge at all. But this one still does a great job. Battery life, I get in my mixed use, quite the similar device. Here I got something, everything from about seven to nine hours with a similar brightness both. And I think a lot of people can even get more out of it because I have a tendency to be a quite fast user. I always do something and this drains a little bit more. I think the slightly more efficient device is the Apple iPad Air 2, but this one is an excellent battery efficient device as well. So I can't really choose a winner here, maybe for this, but if you watch especially a lot of video shows, uh, videos, movies and so on, 
this one can easily match up to these. I won't talk about the camera, so who's the overall winner? And I'm not even talking about the software because there's just a too big of a difference. We have iOS here and we have Android 5.1.1, so Lollipop here. The difference is just too big, but the overall experience, you can do pretty much the same these days on both, especially on a tablet. They both get a job done. I could do my social media, I could watch my videos, I could listen to my podcasts, play my games, even though this one is definitely better for games. So not quite considering, of course, we have more tablet optimized apps on the Apple compared to this to the Android, but I don't think so much people on the Android ecosystem really need that. It's it's okay, but definitely here we have a little bit of an advantage on the iPad to just better, more professional apps. Overall winner for me, coming from an Android device myself, usually is the Tab S2. But owning an Apple iPad R2 for already one year now, I would switch to the Tab S if I wouldn't lose any money. Because what I usually do, and since I'm more used to the Android ecosystem, since my phone is an Android, I would switch to it because it gets all that I usually do done. And it's just the more seamless experience coming from an Android phone to an Android tablet because I have all the same apps and I can do everything. Usually I do slightly different things on my tablet than on my phone. So the Apple iPad do does the job just fine. I never had any issues. What I want from a tablet, it gets done as well. I don't usually take that much advantage of all the tablet optimized apps, but it's great. Lately, since I think it was iOS 8.3 or 4, my performance, especially with Mercury, went a little bit down to the toilet. So that one lost a lot of performance. It's still good in Chrome and Safari, but I definitely had a lot of issues with Mercury recently. I can't blame the Apple app R2 for that. And it's an issue of the app. But someone who uses the browser a lot and is a big fan of Mercury, it's quite a letdown. On the Samsung, I have my, Note, my Naked Browser Pro, which is usually my default one. But if you compare it side by side. Also, in terms of build quality, both very similar and I would like each other. So no problems here. In terms of the display, I give it a big win here because it's just a very impressive, not so accurate display though. So I really love this one. It's just an extremely pleasure, pleasable or pleasing display. In terms of sound, I prefer the Apple Apple R2 slightly, but this one still does a job fine. Performance, both quite nice on both, but I definitely prefer this one because the Android scrolling is just something that I prefer a little bit more and I have the apps that I'm used to. Battery life, absolutely top notch on both. It doesn't really matter which one you take if you want great battery life, except if you want super long standby, then this one is to go for. Software is something that you have to decide. So I would make my decision if I wouldn't have an iPad R2 already and I would have to buy a tablet, I would go for the Tab S2. But the, the Tab S2, even though I prefer it over the iPad R2, isn't that much better that I want to switch. I am still absolutely fine with my iPad R2 and I will use it until it's broken because I don't have that demanding tasks or needs on a tablet. So both would do the job just fine. This one is my personal winner, but now it's up for you to decide which one is for you the winner and maybe try to keep the debate between iOS and Android a little bit apart because I personally don't care what OS I use as long as it does what it has to. In terms of the overall experience, Android and especially Samsung did a great catch up because I said it already early this year, Samsung will finally, or not Samsung, but Android will finally provide an experience that can easily match, if not surpass the experience on the iPad R2. And I think this is the first device that actually got that right in many reasons. Like I said, it's even better on some, not so much, but both excellent. Let me know which one you prefer and why. That's it for my comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 9.7 and the Apple iPad Air 2. Okay, until next time, bye.